Solar eruptions are the most energetic events in the solar system. Coronal mass ejections are so energetic that if you took all of the energy produced in human history, you go back to the very beginning of time with campfires for cavemen, and then the industrial era with steam engines, and today with power plants and rockets and airplanes, if you had all that energy, it does not come close to the energy released in a coronal mass ejection. A coronal mass ejection, or CME, is a huge entangled mess of plasma and magnetic field that routinely erupts from the surface of the sun. Essentially, part of the solar atmosphere becomes unstable and begins accelerating at hundreds to thousands of kilometers per second. CMEs routinely impact the Earth. They can do significant damage to satellites and affect power grids or even pipelines on the surface of the Earth. When you cover up the everyday sun, what emerges is the sun's atmosphere, which is called the corona. And it's this tenuous, plasma environment that's threaded through by complicated magnetic field that's constantly evolving as the sun boils and turns below it. And what's really crazy is that that region of the sun is a million degrees. The surface of the sun is something like 10,000 degrees, but as you move away, the temperature goes up and up and up, and nobody knows how this region of the sun becomes energized and heated. When the opportunity to work on sunset came along, it was a chance to extend our horizons way further. And so James and I had been talking about this for a long time. You know, how could we do this? How could we create new images that would allow us to explore a part of the sun's atmosphere that hadn't been explored before? My name is James Mason. I'm the principal investigator for Sunset, and this is Sunset. Coronal mass ejections are these enormous explosions that occur on the sun frequently, I mean several times a day on average, and they're the most energetic phenomenon in the entire solar system. We've been limited though in how well we could see them because the coronal mass ejections do the bulk, almost all of their acceleration is in this gap in between what we have traditionally been able to see. All the most important things to understand how these eruptions occur happens right in the place we haven't been able to observe very well before, and Sunset solves that. We can see everything from the center of the disk all the way out to several solar radii with no gaps at really high time cadence, so we can image these things much better than has ever been done before. What's really cool about Sunset is we can actually take two pictures at the same time. We can take a picture of the inner part of the corona, which is pretty bright, with a really short exposure, and just enough light comes in that we get a nice image without flooding the instrument with tons of light. At the very same time, we can take a picture of the outer corona where all the dynamics are happening, where coronal mass ejections and eruptions are happening. And Sunset fills the gap between them with really beautiful observations that allow us to actually see how the dynamic activity that's happening at the sun's surface translates through this region, is sort of filtered through the complex interactions that happen there, and then can proceed away from the sun to the Earth. We're using satellites to look at these huge explosions that are happening very far away and trying to understand how something at the sun can affect our daily life here on Earth. CMEs matter because they help us understand physics in general, but they're also super important for understanding space weather, which is sort of how the environment around the Earth changes. Space weather is a phenomenon that affects us, our daily lives. It's largely driven by these coronal mass ejections. When they happen to be directed towards the Earth, that can cause power outages on the ground. It disrupts satellite communications and satellites just operating at all. We've got something that's relatively stable to start and then something happens and it begins accelerating from the sun very quickly. And so we have ideas on how this happens, but there's a lot of details that we don't really know yet. So we would really like to be able to predict, you know, just like regular terrestrial weather, hurricanes and things. It's also important to be able to predict space weather, but it's been really hard to do to date because we don't understand how these eruptions get accelerated. So if you want to know how long is it going to be until this coronal mass ejection is going to arrive at Earth, you need to know how it gets accelerated, which will lead ultimately to how long will it take for this CME to arrive at Earth? At what time should we buckle down, cut off power grid things to save the transformers? When should astronauts shelter? Things like that. Sunset is a joint effort between APL and LASP and both institutions are bringing uh, great strengths to this project. Both have been around for many decades, working on NASA missions, doing incredible work. Recently, APL has pulled off some really impressive feats. Sunset is deriving a lot of expertise and experience from those big missions for this tiny little satellite to build this telescope. 
And at last, we've been doing CubeSats for over a decade now, very successfully, so successfully that just recently, LAST was named the Coast Bar Center of Excellence for small sats. CubeSats are these kind of platforms where you know you should be able to take the risk. It's also your entry rate to space. So naturally, you know, they've had a higher failure rate. About 50% was what it was maybe a couple of years ago. So we've been very lucky with our 100% success rate. Essentially what makes LAST CubeSats successful is that we have adopted a philosophy of looking at this as non-flight programs. What I mean from that is that we've actually scaled CubeSats from our rocket flight programs. In spite of these limited lean budgets, we are able to execute it with a team that knows what it's doing and then not shirking on the test process and making sure that all of these tests are done. And that kind of helps us to you know, have a really good confidence when it goes up. I mean, it doesn't assure you of mission success, but at least on your side, you know that every, you've done everything that you can to test the spacecraft. The biggest risk of this telescope working is the filters breaking because they are so incredibly thin. Literally invisible if you were to look at them edge on because they are thinner than the shortest wavelengths of visible light. So it's very easy to break them. They are sitting right behind that door. That door is there to protect them. The first thing that the light encounters is one of those filters, which are these 150 nanometer thick, thin layers of aluminum that reject visible light. And so uh, a ton of the photons that would otherwise go in get rejected by the filters. The extreme ultraviolet carries through and hits the primary mirror, which is about the size of my palm. And it's then focused down and reflected to the secondary mirror, which blocks some of the light itself, but then passes the light back through a hole in the middle of the primary mirror. There's a redundant filter in case the front one has any issues that let light get through, and then through the detector filter to the detector. Even though a CubeSat is a very small satellite, it is still a satellite. We like to say a sparrow and an ostrich are both a type of bird, so this is also just a small satellite. It has to have all the same components as a big spacecraft, so it's everything that you would find in a, in a big spacecraft packed into a very small volume the size of a shoebox. Sunset is a very key instrument in being able to show NASA, NOAA, that you know operational space weather data can be obtained by these kind of platforms and these kind of miniaturized instruments. So I'm, you know, I'm very, very keen on the instrument success and the science objectives of Sunset. It can open up a lot of doors. We can do operational science. We can do gap filling science from these kind of miniaturized instruments. So it's pushing the boundary and all of those. So uh, yeah, I mean, it's a very important instrument and mission for the community. Uh, to see what can be done from these platforms. It feels, it, it feels amazing to have like, we wrote a proposal a few years ago and now a hundred people have come and helped us actually turn it into real hardware, real data that will be streaming a year from now down from space and to solve real problems. By the end of 2025, we anticipate that it will be in space and we are all very anxiously awaiting what the first light from this telescope looks like. All the time that the team has put into making this thing perform like perfectly to spec, every person brought their expertise to the project and their experience and it was like exactly what we needed to get it to the point where, yeah, it's, it's, it's the perfect little telescope. <laughs>